Okay, my name's uh, Steve Mace from uh, from Soulwise, and what I'm going to do now is just present a quick presentation on uh, the uh, Mimo 58 Junior uh, Outdoor 11N Mimo product, uh, and basically just show how easy it is to set up a brace of these to produce a high data throughput link between two points. Now, uh, just a quick background, the 58 Junior is a relatively new product which is uh, a new generation of outdoor bridging products which actually support the 11N um, Wi-Fi uh, standard uh, and as such can uh, take advantages of uh, potentially much higher throughputs and um, sometimes, I say sometimes, they can improve near line of sight. Um, operation, but the main uh, aim, in our opinion, is to actually give you a much higher throughput. And certainly, uh, we've tested a brace of these, uh, giving us true TCP throughputs of uh, of up to 80 meg. So, to quickly set these up, uh, I'm just going to type in the web address of uh, a unit I've got sat on our network here, which is the 168.168.1 network. Comes with the username and password, which by default is username admin admin. Password is password. Click on OK. <coughs> and here we have the uh, main uh, setup screen of the product. Uh, this one is running with the version 2 firmware, and this is set to factory default, so there are no changes uh, other than the, other than just pressing the reset button. Now, first thing we need to do is go to the basic wireless and select radio 1. Now theoretically this is a four radio unit but the uh, version that we have here is only the single radio. So we go basic wireless radio 1 Now <coughs> for bridging these two units the approved technique as per the manual is one end is set up in what is called access point WDS mode and the other end is set up in station WDS mode so what we'll do here is we'll set up the access point WDS end of the link. So we select access point WDS. I'm not going to borrow about changing the SSIDs or anything like that. This is just a basic setup just to show easy and quickly we can set them up. We're going to change the country to United Kingdom. And we're just going to ensure that it does say NA here, which means it will work as 11A stroke 11A product. Uh, and that's all we have to do on this screen. So we're going to apply settings. And now save the changes. So we just wait for it to save the changes and bring the screen back up again. Okay, that's refreshed and back up again. Now what we'll do is go to advanced wireless, yet again radio one. And uh, we're going to be using an outdoor mode, so we have to enable the long-range parameters. Now, uh, going in outdoor mode is important because when set to indoor mode, it uses the indoor UK 5 gig frequencies, which, as you all know from watching my previous other webinars and other videos, etc., is the band A frequency. But we want to use the band B frequency, which is uh, legal for outdoor use in the UK. So we click on the enable button here, and that enables the band B frequencies. And we're going to put a rough frequency distance of 100 meters. It doesn't really matter for the purpose of this test. And we click on calculate, and what that does is it uh, computes new ACK and CTS and slot timeouts based upon this distance. Click on apply, and yet again, save the configurations. So now we're back up again. And what we're going to do now is the final uh, thing is we're going to uh, change the IP address of this product. Obviously, if we're going to have two units on the network, we don't want them both on the same address. So on this one, we're just going to change the IP address from the default of 168.168.1. We'll just change this to point 0.2. And we'll turn off DHCP server while we're here, because we don't actually need that for this application. Yet again, we're going to click on Apply. Yet again, we're going to Save Changes. Okay, so now it's come back up again, and obviously the IP address has changed now. It's changed to 168.168.2. So now it's automatically uh, tried to log in again on the new address. So again, that's admin and password. 
I'm going to click on a click OK. Oh, we're not going to bother with Firefox remembering those passwords. So now the unit is set up on the new address. Just go to the status and we can see here just confirming it's set up as access point WDS mode. So that's one unit set up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video and um, disconnect this unit from the network and then connect in a second unit. So I'll be back in just two shakes of a lamb's tail. Okay, so now I've connected the second unit to the network and we'll log in on the default address again 68.168.1 Enter now into the configuration of the of the second unit and what we're going to do is pretty much what we did before so the first thing is we need to go to the radio setup and make sure it's set up in the various modes and for UK operation okay so uh, as we say the uh, proof technique as per the manual is one end as access point WDS and the other end as station WDS we've already done the access point WDS one so now we're just going to click this as station WDS you notice this has changed a bit we've got extra fields here this enable us to actually lock it to specific remote MAC addresses if we want to uh, we're going to change the country click on there change that to United Kingdom yet again we're going to check it set for 11 end stroke A mode and now we're going to apply settings save changes okay we just wait for that to uh, reboot okay we're back in now what we're going to do is we're going to go to advanced radio advanced wireless for radio 1 again enable it for outdoor use so rough distance of 100 meters calculate got the new figures in for the distance apply and save changes just wait for it to reboot again oh, we're back again now we're going to go to the network setup now we don't need to change the IP address because we've already changed the IP address of the second unit so this, we can leave this on the default address so all I'm going to do here is just disable the DHCP server I'm going to click apply settings save changes okay so while that's rebooting now what I'm going to do is uh, well what I did previously um, in the interlude was I connected the first unit to a laptop computer on the other side of the office and that lap computer is on 192.168.1.165 okay so I'm just going to set up a ping to that unit and uh, as you say before as you can see before I even finished actually typing the uh, the instructions into ping this unit has rebooted and the link is just there it's just happened there was no uh, no ifs and buts it just happened if we go to the status page so this is the station for the uh, sorry the status page for the station and you can see here that it actually says we are connected to a remote access point signal strength transmit rates of 270 meg and it's using a 40 meg wide channel on frequency 5.56 which as you know is one of the band B channels it even gives us the remote um, uh, remote MAC address of the of the other AP at the other end and as we can see here there's some uh, data being sent across that link and of course because we're actually on a um, network now we've got both units actually on this network what we can do is we can now uh, create a new tab beauty of Firefox you see and log into the other unit so this is the uh, this is the access point WDS side of the link yet again it's showing that it's actually connected and if I click on more yet again you've got more information about the link uh, here you can actually see that it actually says we're connected to a, uh, a station at the other end this is the MAC address of that this is the signal strength and the various uh, data throughputs well more specifically the uh, the Wi-Fi connectivity speed and that's it you can just see the link it works it's not rocket science that's all there is to it well I hope that um, 
was nice and easy and you can see that it really isn't hard to make these units just link just a quick bit of setting up and uh, you're up and going with the basic link obviously once you've got it working at this stage you might want to go on and start playing around with things like you know security and all that sort of thing but um, essentially that's all you have to do for a link